it's January 13th, 6 p.m. We're going to read Liber New Subfigura 11. This is the book of the cult of the infinite without. The aspirant is Hadit. Nuit is the infinite expansion of the rose. Hadit is the infinite concentration of the rude. Instruction of VVVVV. First, let the aspirant learn in his heart the first chapter of the book of the law. Instruction of VVVVV. Worship i.e. identify thyself with the cobs, the secret light within the heart. Within this again, unextended is hadith. This is the first practice of the meditation. 220, chapter 1, verse 6 and 21. Adore and understand the rim of the stella of revealing. Above, the gemid azur is the naked splendor of Nuit. She bends in ecstasy to kiss the secret ardours of hadith. This is the first practice of intelligence. Librael, chapter 1, verse 14. Avoid any act of choice or discrimination. This is the first practice of ethics. Liberale, chapter 1, verse 22. Consider the 6 and 50 that 50 divided by 6 equals 0 0.12. 0, the circumference, nuit. Point, the center, hadit. 1, the unity preceding, rahur kuit. 2, the world of illusion. Nuit thus comprehends all and none. Also, 50 plus 6 equals 56. 5 plus 6 equals 11, the key to all rituals. And 50 times 6 equals 300, the spirit of the child within. This is the second practice of intelligence. Liberael, chapter 1, verse 24 and 25. The result of this practice is the consciousness of the continuity of existence, the omnipresence of the body of Nuit. In other words, the aspirant is conscious only of the infinite universe as a single being. This is the first indication of the nature of the result. Liberael, chapter 1, verse 26. Meditate upon Nuit as the continuous one resolved into none and two as the phases of her being. This is the second practice of meditation. Liber Al, chapter 1, verse 27. Meditate upon the facts of Samadhi on all planes, the liberation of heat and chemistry, joy and natural history, Ananda in religion, when two things join to lose themselves in a third. This is the third practice of meditation. Liber Al, chapter 1, verses 28 through 30. Let the aspirant pay utmost reverence to the authority of the AA and follow its instructions, and let him swear a great oath of devotion unto Nuit. This is the second practice of ethics, Liberael, chapter 1, verse 32. Let the aspirant beware the slightest exercise of his will against another being. Thus, lying is a better posture than sitting or standing, as it opposes less resistance to gravitation. Yet his first duty is to the force nearest and most potent, e.g. he may rise to greet a friend. This is the third practice of ethics, Liberael, chapter 1, verse 41. Let the aspirant exercise his will without the least consideration for any other being. This direction cannot be understood, much less accomplished, until the previous practice has been perfected. This is the fourth practice of ethics, Liberael, chapter 1, verses 42 through 44. Let the aspirant comprehend that these two practices are identical. This is the third practice of intelligence, Liberael, chapter 1, verse 45. Let the aspirant live the life beautiful and pleasant, for this freedom hath he won. But let each act, especially of love, be devoted wholly to his true mistress, Nuit. This is the fifth practice of ethics. Liberael, chapter 1, verses 51, 52, 61, and 63. Let the aspirant yearn toward Nuit under the stars of night with a love directed by his magical will, not merely proceeding from the heart. This is the first practice of magic art. Liberael, chapter 1, verse 57. The result of this practice in the subsequent life of the aspirant is to fill him with unimaginable joys, to give him certainty concerning the nature of the phenomenon called death, to give him peace unalterable. This is the second indication of the nature of the result. Liberael, chapter 1, verse 58. Let the aspirant prepare a perfume of resinous woods and gums according to his inspiration. This is the second practice of magic art. Liberael, chapter 1, verse 59. Let the aspirant prepare a pantacle as follows. Inscribe a circle within a pentagram, upon a ground square or of such other convenient shape as he may choose. Let the circle be of scarlet, the pentagram black, the ground royal blue studded with golden stars. Within the circle at its center shall be painted a sigil that shall be revealed to the aspirant by Nuit herself. And this pentacle shall serve for a talismanic image or as an eidolon or as a focus for the mind. This is the third practice of magic art. Liberael, chapter 1, verse 60. Let the aspirant find a lonely place, if possible a place in the desert of sand, or if not, a place unfrequented, and without objects to disturb the view. Such are moorlands, fens, the open sea, broad rivers, and open fields. 
also and especially the summits of mountains. There let him invoke the goddess as he hath wisdom and understanding so to do. But let his invocation be that of a pure heart, i.e. a heart wholly devoted to her, and let him remember that it is Hetty himself in the most secret place therewith that invoketh. Then let this serpent Hetty burst into flame. This is the fourth practice of magic art. Libriel, chapter 1, verse 61. Then shall the aspirant come a little to lie in her bosom. This is the third indication of the nature of the result. Libriel, chapter 1, verse 61. Let the aspirant stand upon the edge of a precipice in act or in imagination. Let him imagine and suffer the fear of falling. Next, let him imagine with this aid that the earth is falling, and he with it, or he from it. And considering the infinity of space, let him excite the fear within him to the point of ecstasy, so that the most dreadful dream of falling that he hath ever suffered be as nothing in comparison. This is the fourth practice of meditation, instruction of VVVVV. Thus, having understood the nature of this third indication, let him in his magic right fall from himself into Nuit, or expand into her, as his imagination may compel him. And at that moment, desiring earnestly to kiss of Nuit, let him give one particle of dust, i.e., let Hadit give himself up utterly to her. This is the fifth practice of magic art. Libriel, chapter 1, verse 61. Then shall he lose all in that hour. This is the fourth indication of the nature of the result. Libriel, chapter 1, verse 61. Let the aspirant prepare a love song of rapture unto the goddess, or let him be inspired by her unto this. This is the sixth practice of the magic art. Libriel, chapter 1, verse 63. Let the aspirant be clad in a single robe, and a buy of scarlet wrought with gold is most suitable. This is the seventh practice of the magic art. Libriel, chapter 1, verse 61. Let the aspirant wear a rich headdress, a crown of gold adorned with sapphires or diamonds with a royal blue cap of maintenance or nems is most suitable. This is the eighth practice of magic art. Libriel, chapter 1, verse 61. Let the aspirant wear many jewels such as he may possess. This is the ninth practice of magic art. Libriel, chapter 1, verse 61. Let the aspirant prepare an elixir or a libation as he may have wit to do. This is the tenth practice of magic art. Libriel, chapter 1, verse 63. Let the aspirant invoke, lying supine, his robe spread out as it were a carpet. This is the eleventh practice of magic art. Instruction of VVVVV. Summary, preliminaries, these are the necessary possessions. 1. The crown or headdress. 2. The jewels. 3. The pantacle. 4. The robe. 5. The song or incantation. 6. The place of invocation. 7. The perfume. 8. The elixir. Summary continued, preliminaries. These are the necessary comprehensions. 1. The natures of Nuit and Hadith and their relation. 2. The mystery of the individual will. Summary continued, preliminaries. These are the meditations necessary to be accomplished. 1. The discovery of Hadith in the aspirant and identification with him. 2. The continuous one. 3. The value of the equation n plus negative n. 4. Kremnophobia. Summary continued, preliminaries. These are the ethical practices to be accomplished. 1. Assertion of the Kether point of view. 2. Reverence to the order. 3. Abolition of human will. 4. Exercise of true will. 5. Devotion to Nuit throughout a beautified life. Summary continued, the actual rite. 1. Retire to desert with crown and other insignia and implements. 2. Burn perfume. 3. Chant incantation. 4. Drink unto Nuit the elixir. 5. Lying supine with eyes fixed on the stars, practice the sensation of falling into nothingness. 6. Being actually within the bosom of Nuit, let Hadit surrender himself. Summary concluded the results. 1. Expansion of consciousness to that of the infinite. 2. Loss of all, the highest mystical attainment. 3. True wisdom and perfect happiness.